Okay, this is going into what Keith is talking about now. Okay, so now understand that your teacher has her own way of explaining things. And I do not want to be judged. Don't judge me, Monique. Okay? For my ways of explaining things. Okay? So, we have, in chemistry, we have types of reactions. Okay? How things are put together. Alright? So the first thing we have is combination reactions. In a combination reaction, I like to call them the couples. You got Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, you be looking good. You know you're about to hit that club, you're like, oh snap, looking shorty right there. I might have came by myself, but I'm leaving with her. Okay? So you came in as singles. And you leaving as a couple. Right? Then you have the decomposition reactions. I like to think about the decomposition reaction as the breakup. He done said the last thing to me, we are done. You come in as a couple and you're leaving as singles. Okay? Then we have single displacement reactions. I like to think about single displacement reactions as she has stole my partner, y'all. My baby has stole my baby. I can't deal with it. You have a couple and you have a single coming in and removing one of the couple the partners in the couple, and you make a new couple and a new single. Okay? Then you have double displacement reactions. I like to think about double displacement reaction as the swingers. Honey, I might have came with you, but I'm leaving with him. Okay? You have two couples coming together, and they're going to switch partners to make two brand new couples. Do we get that? Okay. Now we have some examples. Wait, go back one second. Sorry. Uh -huh. Got it? Okay. So, combination reactions. Combination reaction is a reaction between two or more substances that react to form one compound. Can I get this reaction read in a sentence, please? Who's it going to be? One Go one ahead. One molecule hydrogen gas and one molecule No, no. React with? React with one molecule chlorine gas. Uh, to produce? Two molecule of hydrogen fluoride. Hydrogen fluoride or give me the acid version. Oh, no. Fluoric acid. No, not fluoric acid. Hydro fluoric acid, right? So here you have some more examples. You have magnesium reacting with oxygen gas to produce magnesium, magnesium oxide. You have, can I get this one right in a sentence? No, oh, you read it already. No, uh, go ahead, man. Second one. Uh, uh, one molecule of nitrogen gas reacts with three molecules of hydrogen gas to produce uh, two molecules of ammonia. Very good. Okay, you guys won't know this one, but this is one molecule of propane reacting with whew, one molecule of bromine to produce a bromo um, carbon. Okay. Bromo carbon. No, no, no. It's a it's a hydrocarbon that it's a bromine is substituted on it. So right. the naming this 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 is organic right here. What would that be? Bromo? Huh? 
no, we don't want to name this yet. I'm not going to get into organic naming of things. Just know it's uh, um, hydrocarbon with bromine attached to it. That's it. So that plus O2, would that equal? No, not this. This plus O2. Because this is no longer a hydrocarbon, right? All right, because we got the bromine. Now. Right. Decomposition reactions. Decomposition reaction, you have one substance that breaks down into two or more substances. All right? So you have two molecules of uh, hydrogen, hydrogen peroxide, thank you. The arrow in a decomposition reaction reads as decomposes two. This is the only one that changes. So two molecules of hydrogen peroxide decomposes two. Two molecules of water and one molecule of oxygen gas. Right? Now let's take some examples. Can I get a sentence, Marie? One molecule of calcium carbonate decomposes to uh, one molecule of calcium oxide uh, plus one molecule and one molecule of carbon dioxide. Very good. Uh, second, Elizabeth. KClO3. Bananas. Potassium chlorate. Very good. Potassium chlorate. And they decompose the soup. Two, two molecules of potassium chlorate. Ah, uh, chlor. Chloride. Very good. And one molecule of oxygen. Oxygen. Gas. Very good. Okay, you guys won't know this one. This is two molecules of sodium azide, decomposes to two molecules of sodium and three molecules of nitrogen gas. Okay, sodium azide, that's some nasty stuff. It's a mutagen. We use that in the lab, in the chemistry lab. You will be fine, but your kids will come up with more. Okay? There you go. So now you have. Single displacement. Single displacement, you have one element is reacting with a compound. To displace one of your elements in the compound and make a new compound. Alright? So here you have one molecule of hydrogen gas reacts with one molecule of copper oxide to produce one molecule me, of copper and one molecule of water. Alright? Here we have some more examples. Uh, let's go with Ronnie. Oh, first one here. Mm -hmm. Magnesium <laughs> and um, hydrogen gas. Which one? Oh, one molecule of uh, magnesium. Uh, reacts with uh, hydrochloride. Nah, uh, uh. Hydrochloric. One mole of hydrochloride, chloric acid. Uh, to produce. To produce. One molecule of magnesium chloride. Ooh, chlor I like chloride. This one. Chloride. Uh huh. Uh, and and uh, one mole of uh, hydrogen gas. Very good. Next one. So let me just point this out. So right here, you see this right here? That's a, that's aluminum, right? You see that that's aluminum. That's an AL, right? Right, mom? Yeah, yeah, I can see. See that. there you go. See right here, you got me. Okay, you speak Mika. That's what I like. Okay, right? so let's go. Uh, this one for me. I don't remember what I had for some work. Do we have some for that? Um, no. 
Hydroxide. How many? One. Uh, let's go with Shamis. Last one. Reacts with one molecule of 
hydrogen fluoride to produce one molecule of sodium fluoride and one molecule of water. Now there are certain characteristics to double displacement reaction which we'll see in further detail in the lab. All right? Formation of a precipitate. What are the two ways that we can see in the lab formation of a precipitate? There you go. If you go from clear, colorless to cloudy, what else? If you see solids at the bottom of your test tube. Next, if you see the release of gas bubbles, you ultimately, if you see bubbles forming in your test tube, that lets you know that one, it's a double displacement reaction, and you have, not necessarily a double displacement reaction, is that this is a chemical reaction, and you are releasing a gas. If you have a releasing heat, how do we figure out if you have a releasing heat? What are we going to do? Feel the test tube. You're going to feel it up, you're going to love it up, you're going to hug it up, and you're going to see a difference in your heat. Formation of water. The only way that you're going to know the formation of water is to actually find the products. Okay? And we'll be able to figure that out soon enough. Okay, double displacement reaction. Some of the reactions that we have, we have acid-based neutralization reactions. These reactions produce water and heat. Okay, we have gas forming, you no know, formation of precipitate. Before we get here, so can I get this right in the sentence? Who hasn't done me yet? <clears throat> Go ahead, Rana. One molecule um, chloric hydrochloric uh -huh. acid. Hydrochloric, very good. React with sodium hydroxide. Uh -huh. One molecule sodium hydroxide. Very good. Produce one molecule sodium chloride. Very good. And one molecule water. Very good. So formation of a precipitate. Formation of a precipitate. You have your in, on your product side. You will have a solid being formed. Can I just read a sentence? We gonna go with Karen. Yes. Right? 
We're looking at the, the products here. And you t I'm telling you, <coughs> just look at the products and tell me what the reactants are supposed to be. You got that? Um, so break this up into ions for me. Just for right now. Break this up into ions. What would the ions of this be? Of silver chloride be? AG plus CL minus. What would the ions for water be? H plus O H minus. Right? That's how you break down the water? Yes, yeah. but you won't have to do that anytime soon. Okay, good. This is that's an organic thing. Okay. Okay? Oh wait, not two two things. So, if we were, what kind of reaction would this be? Huh? Double, double, double. double displacement. So, if we switch in partners to give us this, wouldn't we have to start with this? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Oh, so we're turning a reaction? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. That's the A, that's the, the A. What, what is it? A, C, A, B, A, B, A, B, plus C, D, and then you go A, D, and B, C. Okay. That's the double displacement thing. Yeah. So now you have gas forming reactions. All right. So there's something else that we need to know about gas forming reactions. We have. Actually, I want you to see this in the lab. But there's something special about one of your polyatomic ions in the acid form that you will see today, and you'll be able to figure out what's happening. I'm not going to ruin it for you. I want you guys to actually see it. Gas forming reaction. If you have, can I get this right in a sentence? CN is cyanide. All right? Who's going to do it for me? Go ahead. Wait, did you do one already? She had. Uh, one molecule of uh, sulfur acid plus two molecule of uh, sodium and uh, cyanide. Uh, react to uh, uh, one molecule of uh, sodium uh, sulfate. Uh huh. And two mo uh, molecule of uh, The whole thing. Hydrogen. Very good. Um, I get confused when it comes to like the um the numbers and other side. What numbers on the other side? The subscripts? Yeah. Do we put it? Cause you see how here it had two Na. Put it here. Yeah. <coughs> okay, so that that goes back to balancing the equation. So after we you you get that one. This so one, you have. Up. You have your product, you have your reactants in your products, then you balance the equation, then you can read the equation. Okay, so after we put the so what do we do first to get well, we, we in terms of what? In terms of getting where the numbers are. We have to first we have to put them together. So no, 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 no. That's chapter four. We didn't get there yet. Okay, okay. Okay? Okay. So let's take, let's take our time with that. Alright? So in terms of finding the products, we have not gotten there yet, but I will teach you that in lab today. Okay. Okay? So formation of heat. You have two molecules of hydrogen gas reacting with one molecule of oxygen gas to produce two molecules of water and heat. Your little triangle or your delta sign, that's a symbol for heat. Yes. We have to include phase changes while we are doing the how will we know about phase changes? Oh. You don't judge solid liquid. Yeah, but how will we know about it though? Solubility rules. We ain't there yet. Solubility rules, chapter four. Oh. I have a question for the formation of heat. Is it the same as a combination reaction? This is a combination reaction, yes. Combustion. No combustion, no. combination. So combination reaction is actually the same as a double displacement? No. That's why it's there. So, 
So this is under a different heading. So if it's going to be a question, like this equation, is it a combination or a double discussion? You tell me, what is it? But from what I taught you, what is it? Combination. But I wanted you to remember, we have these characteristics. Release of heat, formation of water. All of these are under what you would normally see in a double displacement reaction. So these are just examples of equations that represent what formation of heat will look like, formation of gas would look like. Okay? All right, combustion reaction. Combustion reaction is between the reaction between a hydrocarbon. What's a hydrocarbon? A compound that only contains hydrogen and carbon reacting with oxygen gas to produce a flame. You have to remember that in a combinate, uh, combustion reaction, the products will always be carbon dioxide and water. No matter what the, the, the reactants are, which will always be a hydrocarbon and oxygen gas, the products will always be carbon dioxide and water. Always. Alright? So here you have methane reacting with two molecules of oxygen gas to produce carbon dioxide and water. Here you have propane reacting with five molecules of oxygen gas to produce carbon dioxide and water. Okay? How much carbon and how many molecules or how many moles of carbon dioxide and water you get is going to be based on your, your hydrocarbon and how much oxygen you actually react with. So we get that? Yes. Alright. Now let's let's decide. Identify each of the following as combination, decomposition, single displacement, double displacement. First one. Double displacement? Yeah. Are we in agreement? Yeah. That's what I think too. Second one. The first one, yeah. A and B and Yali is a couple. Yes, so what, what is that? Combination. Combination. Very good. Next one. Decomposition. Decomposition. Good. You start off as a couple, you end up as two or more. Next one. Very good. Single displacement. You have one single and you have a couple and you displace a partner. Questions, comments, inquiries? Take me a little minute to really look at. We, we, we ain't got much of a minute though. We got like 30 seconds. No, no, I mean like to look, yeah. <laughs> That's what we got. Okay? Alright. Now we're switching gears. Okay? Calculate the formula weights. Now, do you remember when we were calculating molecular weights? And we had to say, yeah, you better remember. <laughs> and we had this, the five steps to calculate molecular weight. Yeah, the thing times that the thing thing. thing uh huh. Thing. So what exactly do you do to calculate molecular weights? Come again. The, the percentage. No, uh, 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 uh. no. That's calculating atomic mass. Something different. That's what I was talking about. Identify the elements. Identify your atoms involved. Step two. How many atoms are? Identify how many atoms are there. Step three. There you go. You're going to multiply that number by the mass on the periodic table. Step four? Add them all up. Add them all up. Formula weights, the same thing. The only difference is in the name. Formula weights has to deal with ionic compounds. But how you calculate it is the same as how you would calculate your molecular weight that you did. All right? So here, for example, we have calcium chloride. Calcium chloride is an ionic compound. How many calciums do you have? One. How many chlorines do you have? Two. Two. So you have one calcium multiplied by its 
atomic weight. You have two chlorines multiplied by its atomic weight, and then you add it all up. Okay. Yes. But do we have to keep a significant figures here? Of course you do. But if we add it, it's going to be the, it's not supposed to be one, one. We go by the lowest one, right? Yeah. Right. Okay. But it's supposed to be four significant figures, right? No. It's not the lowest one. What are we doing here? What kind of arithmetic are we doing here? Addition, addition right? So what do we do? What do we do with addition? What about the decimal point? The lowest amount of spaces to the right of the decimal point. Which one has the lowest amount of spaces? The first one, so you need two spaces behind the decimal point, so therefore you have two spaces. You can't forget these rules. You can't. Okay? What you just did, did you just have the No, again, it's the same procedure. The only thing that's different is their name. Formula weight has to do with ionic compounds. It's for molecular compounds. But it's found the same way. So, a compound, it's two non-metals? Yes. Isn't that also a covalent bond? Yes. So it's the same thing? Yes. I don't know. So let's do some working here. So what's my name here? This one. This one. Very good. What was the second one name again? You tell me. It's a carbonate, right? Because it's this open. All right. So now, what you want to do, what I want you to do, is to find my formula weights for these three. So remember, we must always, always, always have our handy dandy periodic table. Like, um, let's 
uh, what I got is uh, the 56.1049. So I rounded up to 0 0.105 because I have, uh, the least I have is the. Uh, uh, well, okay, so in terms of figuring out your significant figures, I will give you the, the number that I want you to use. So everybody will be using the same value for the atomic mass units. But, uh, all right, so, but uh, in here, we're going gonna to go with the, uh, the numbers. Like, uh, in terms of on the periodic table? Yeah. Yeah, so you can follow those numbers in terms of determining your significant figures. But if you don't provide, usually like we take the round up, right? One or two. No, don't round up. No rounding no. until the end. And last one? 164. 164. Point something? What's that something? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, don't have, I just forgot my calculator. You can use your phone. So we have uh, 163.94 minus 2 AMUs. Do we get that? Okay, so now again, molecular weight. Molecular weight simply means you find in the molecular weight of the final mass of a molecular compound. You have ethane. Ethane has two carbons. Carbon has a atomic weight of 12.011 AMUs. You have hydrogen. Hydrogen has a molecular weight of 1.00794. Can you go back one second? I want to see what answer you got for 163.94. Okay. So again, the same procedure that we just did. You add them all up and you get 30.070 AMUs. Yes. Yes, you can calculate the atomic mass or the atomic weight. So that would ultimately be to find this. <coughs> if I didn't give you the periodic table and I simply gave you the abundance and the, the, the abundance of each isotope and their mass, and I ask you to find the atomic mass. Would you know how to do that? The abundance times the isotope's mass. Add that all up. Divide by 100. Divide by 100. If you use the percent sign, you don't have to divide by 100. Right, right. If, you, if you use the whole percent, you don't have to divide by 100. And then that will give you the elemental mass. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now let's do. What are the names here? What are four? Nitric acid and? That is both. So I'll send an A. Acetic acid. Acetic acid. Good. So let's give me some molecular weights, please, and thank you. First one should be easy. 18. Minus 2. Uh-huh. 60 years. 
Okay, 61 on my AM news. Did we get that? Yeah. Okay, the 